<laughs> this thing is so massive with a dew cap. <laughs> This is actually very promising weather. Uh, today uh, we will have a clear night for the first time after, I don't know, several weeks. And today, most probably, I can test my new telescope, the 200 PDS. And so testing the new telescope and testing uh, guiding with an off-axis guider. This will be the very first time, yeah. So target, I don't know yet. But yeah, let's see. Uh, without further ado, uh, let's do the setup of this monster. This will be the first slew uh, with this new telescope on my HEQ5 Pro mount. I hope it will work. Yeah, I think at least or the orientation is quite nice. Do you? No. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So most probably this is a shadow of the prism. Uh, it's hanging too low. Um, yes. Oh, um, auto focus. No. Yes. Yes. That's very nice. Now we are talking. That's not very nice. <laughs> this looks strange, okay. Most probably it's because of the prism. Now I need to change the prism here. That's... Oh. Um, yeah, first I changed from the L Extreme filter, so narrow band filter to a broadband filter, so more light is touching the sensor. But uh, I think the problem was really uh, that the prism uh, from the off-axis guider was hanging too low. So this caused a shadow and then I had a problem with the autofocus. Now I uh, changed the position of the prism, uh, I, I uh, switched it uh, more yeah, to the top. Um, yeah, and this actually worked. Now I did the uh, autofocusing again, again and uh, yeah, it worked. <laughs> Very nice. And another thing which is uh, quite important is that you are at least uh, close to the focus. At least uh, roughly. Yeah, and now I can hopefully do some imaging. And yeah, for the first light with this uh, telescope, I decided to go for a target or two targets. Uh, I never image. Um, it's the Galaxy M81 and M82. Bolus Galaxy and the so-called Cigar Galaxy. Uh, two beautiful targets. And then I checked for stars, uh, sharpness and so on, star trails and yeah, so far everything looked very nice. Although, uh, of course, uh, since the HEQ5 Pro mount uh, is really not the best option for such a big telescope. Uh, the guiding was, yeah, rather, yeah, let's say less optimal. But in the end it worked. And then it was time to do my flats. 
Um, I'm always using uh, such a light panel, as you can see here. And yeah, and as you can see, this might uh, some new form here. So yeah, and yeah, to create the actual flats, I love to use the so-called flat wizard in Nina. Here are my settings. You just press start, and then it's do its thing here. And yeah, here you can see. Usually I'm doing 50 exposures of flats. Yeah, and then it's running and super convenient and works very well. I just had a first light uh, last night with this uh, instrument, with this telescope, the Skywatcher 200 PDS. And all in all, it worked quite well. Uh, I solved some problems and so on. Uh, but there are things I want or need to change here. Uh, the first thing is, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, but I think I saw a kind of indication for so-called pinched optics. Uh, this is, uh, this you will see in your, uh, your star pattern, let's say. It's like a shadow, actually three shadows. And this is caused by when you have such a telescope and Newtonian reflector. Um, you have your main mirror and the main mirror uh, is, uh, yeah, is fixed uh, by three clamps. And if it's quite cold, uh, like uh, last night we had minus two degrees Celsius and most probably will have the same temperatures this night, uh, this leads uh, to kind of a shrinking of those clamps. And then you will also yeah, see some kind of shadows in your stars um, thing. And if you yeah, just remove <laughs> the, whole, uh, yeah, the whole main mirror, let's say, and you just uh, unscrew uh, the fixation of the main mirror a little bit, uh, this could, um, yeah, I think this could be a, a solution for this. Uh, I think I will try this. Um, then the second thing is, um, actually the guiding with the prism, uh, with the off-axis guider and the prism was actually quite nice. It worked quite well. And yeah, first I, uh, I saw that the prism, uh, which is directing light to the, to the guiding cam was hanging too low hanging, let's say, or was mounted too low. That means I had a huge uh, shadow in my uh, when when doing my lights, when doing my imaging, and then I made some adjust adjustments, and then I uh, yeah changed the position to a more to the, to the top, so that the the whole prism is not hanging so low and will not lead uh, to such a uh, um, yeah big shadow, and but. In the end, I still had some kind of a shadow, and so I will uh, even uh, try to uh, reposition this uh, prism again a little bit. First, I think I will try with the, yeah, the biggest thing, and for me, it's the most scariest thing. So eat the biggest frog first. Um, um, yeah, what I will do is I will disassemble this one, at least this part here with the main mirror. Uh, yeah, loosen these uh, screws. I think it's six six screws. Then I will remove the main mirror part, the whole this part here, and um, then I will just uh, unscrew uh, the the fixation uh, a little bit. Uh, let's say uh, I will try this. Um, what you will need for this is yeah, maybe you won't need this, but I will use some gloves. Um, at least uh, when when I have the part with the with the main mirror in my hand, and what you definitely need is such a, a screwdriver. This is uh, in the bo in the box uh, of this telescope. So this I will do first. Okay. I, uh, 
cannot move it. <laughs> Man, you have no idea how difficult it was to remove it here, uh, the main mirror part uh, from this. It was so, uh, yeah, it was so tight. I also thought maybe it's about uh, the clamps here. Those, but it was not, it was really difficult. Um, not kidding. I did, I mean, I used a tall kitchen towel and then I just hammered a little bit. It was crazy. I watched, I think I watched uh, now eight videos about how to remove this, and every time it looked very simple and very easy but it wasn't anyways so here we have our main mirror uh, also with the marking um, here middle marking for collimation and already some dust but just a little bit okay and now uh, I will loosen these uh, screws here a little bit. So here you have it. One, two, three. With um, two screws each. And now let's try not to scratch your main mirror. Okay, I think it will start here. very tight it's really really tight as you see I use my finger here that I not accidentally scratch the surface of the uh, mirror yeah I don't know how much I mean I have to say it was really tight really really tight um, for me, it's no wonder I have uh, some most probably uh, pinched optics. Okay, I hope that's okay. I don't know. Um, he does the whole thing. Don't have to clean it. That's that's nice. And now I will try to put it in again. As you can see, it's so I, I cannot. Uh, I think I will need the hammer again. It's crazy. It's so dense. One thing is really uh, unscrew uh, these uh, screws a little bit here. Um, yeah, to remove the pinched optics. And another thing you also can do, I read that it's possible that light can be reflected, uh, yeah, let's say internally reflected on this uh, edge on this edge here and there are some people who are yeah manufactured some kind of ring here of course it will reduce your mirror or effective mirror size a little bit but you will uh, have better star shape but since i don't have a 3d printer or something i think it's okay Let's reinstall this baby here again. The, the tube is just too small. I actually don't know how to do this. I have no choice. Um, oh, it's creepy. And this is after assembling the main mirror again. Uh, looks pretty nice.
And today the thing is even bigger because I have <laughs> the thing is so massive with a dew cap. <laughs> Due to the weather conditions, I had to use the dew cap uh, on this uh, telescope, which made made the whole thing <laughs> even bigger and, of course. Uh, higher wind resistance and so on and the guiding was um, yeah, was not optimal I'd say but it was okay uh, I had to sort sort out some uh, single subs but that was okay and yeah so I had several uh, clear nights and I continued uh, imaging M81 and M82 and yeah, so now I want to show you the final result. But before I do that, uh, I want to say that um, this will be, so since this video is already quite long, uh, I will make at least yeah two or three parts of the first light using my 200 PTS, uh, the new uh, reflector telescope. And yeah, I, can tell you uh, that you will be able to see nice uh, images and uh, here's a little teaser make sure you subscribe to my channel uh, and maybe activate the bell not to miss uh, those new parts and new videos and so on and um, thank you for watching and see you next time clear skies